2019, 2023, where everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Secretary, please call the roll. Good Okay, the first uh, matter of business, we're going to do A1, appointment of the school board director to serve as the member of Delaware County Intermediate Unit Board of Directors for a term ending June 30th, 2025. Uh, director McLaren has been appointed. Does anyone have any uh, comments on agenda items only? Please step up and state your comment, your name and address, and state your comment. Denise Mosley, I just have a question in regards to Mr. Fred Green. Are you a still a school board director? Okay, I thought his term ended per your last meeting. You said his term was ending, so I'm trying to understand how. Okay, at the last meeting. Okay, can y'all clarify then why at the last meeting it was said that he was leaving and now you're saying he has two years left on his term and will that be a conflict of interest to serve on this board as well as be on a, a, a position for the city of Chester? He won't be. Two years left on my term and I'll be resigning next year. I've been taking my seat. Okay, thank you for clarifying. That's all I was asking. Thank you. Any more comments on an agenda item? Okay. So, um, board, De board Director McLaren was appointed to the Board of Directors for the Delaware County Intermediate Unit, and her term will end June 30th, 2025. Um, we'll take a vote, Madam Secretary. We're voting, yes, we're voting, just for the record. Hmm. I'm, sorry. Make a I'm sorry, it needs to be moved in second. Mm -hmm. It's been moved in second. Madam Secretary, can you okay. call the roll, please? Nine years. Oh. 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 
Thank you for the opportunity to be so. Okay, next we have been this, the business agenda, uh, which is going to be removed from the agenda. B1, appointment of committees. And we have B2, approval of the 2024-2025 tax index. Um, the state has set the tax index at 5.3%. So that means we will not, if we decide to raise taxes, it would not go beyond 5.3%. So is there a motion to set this? And I move that the tax index. If we decide to, I second. If we decide to raise taxes, it will not go beyond the five point three percent. Point three. And Mr. Riley, you second. So we want to vote on um, not raising the tax index. Let's start with um, Vice President Ken Washington. Yes. Thank you, sir. Treasurer William Riley. Yes. Thank you. Secretary Lorraine Lavender Sands. Yes. Thank you. Director Fred Green. Yes. Director Lawrence Ham. Yes. Thank you. Director Beverly Harris. Yes. Thank you. Director Betty McLaren. Yes. Thank you. Director Tasley Morales. Yes. Thank you. Madam President Joe Neal. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so. Madam President, we have nine yeas and no nays for not to raise the tax index. All right, thank you. Thank You're you, welcome, Madam Secretary. Secretary. Okay, that ends our meeting for uh, this evening. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? No, I make a motion to adjourn the meeting for this evening. <laughs> I second. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All right.
Will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. And before we begin, I would like to note for the record that action item A12 is a duplication and act, it's the same as action item B2. So action item A12 will be removed from the agenda as it is a duplication for action item B2. At this time, Dr. Ramin will present her superintendent's report. Thank you for seeing Good evening, Board of Directors, community members, those who are watching. We have a few highlights for you today as we end the year. Next slide. We'd like to once again congratulate our school board of directors, our returning board members, our re-elected board members, and our newly elected board members. Congratulations to you again. Just to share briefly, We've started some of the community engagement activities around supporting our schools for continuous improvement. Our faith-based leaders, we've met with them recently, and this was to learn more about the community and those things that we would like to improve within the district, as well as have a more comprehensive approach to how we meet the needs of our scholars to support teaching and learning. So we look forward to continuing those conversations. <laughs> We also met in October as well as December in terms of the advisory board meeting, re-engaging the advisory board around revising our recovery plan. And we are now working with PFM. We've done a lot, a lot of work with Mass Insight in terms of academics and operations. Now we're working with PFM in terms of the financial components. And we look forward to continuing this work with the advisory committee as we finalize those drafts as well as as we begin to implement. Social emotional learning, promoting positive actions. Social emotional learning has been one of our initiatives across the district, in many of our classrooms, across schools. And one of the things that you can find is there's a calendar that was put out for the month of December if you want to participate in some of those activities around social emotional learning. Please find that on our website. Some of our student events district-wide. Our science fair. Our science fair was amazing. We are very excited and happy for our scholars who participated in this event. And we look forward to many more things in terms of science and mathematics. In addition, our students participated in the Winter Wonderland concert, and those were performances across the district from all of our schools where they performed dances, songs, and other musical acts. And we'd like to thank Dr. Bradley, along with the music department, as well as all of our educators who support the teaching and learning that makes this possible. In addition, Edgemont Scholars Academy had a career development workshop for our middle schoolers, and Delcora, as well as other community leaders, participated in that event so that our scholars would have the opportunity to learn more about career pathways. The USD's annual career and college fair was held recently, and there were 20 universities and community organizations featured for Chester High School and STEM Academy. Coming in 2024, the bus patrol safety program is something that we have been talking about pretty consistently at this point, and it is will begin soon. And so if you would like to learn more information about what this looks like, please visit our webpage, Clipper TV, or social media posts. Bus patrol is very important in terms of the safety of our students as they are transported. And we want to ensure that the community works with us in terms of making this happen, to make this a safe, secure place for our students to be transported. Upcoming events, there are a number of winter week festivities that have already happened. We have a few more that are happening as we end the year. Winter recess update. This is just a reminder that Friday, December 22nd, will be a half day of school for all of our schools. Fester High School and STEM Academy will dismiss at 10.30 a.m. 
Toby Farms will dismiss at 11.15 a.m. And all of our elementary schools will dismiss, dismiss at 11.45 a.m. In addition to that, our offices will close and schools and offices will reopen January 2nd, 2024. Happy holidays. Thank you, Dr. Mameen. At this time, we'll have our student rep present tonight. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Jayana Rashid. I attend STEM Academy and I am a member of the Student Council. My position is Vice President. So first we have student of the month. Congratulations to the November student of the month. For eighth grade, we have Nia James and Kamira Brown. For ninth grade, we have Timothy Ferguson and Corday Dorsey. For 10th grade, we have Ruhaila Martin and Myron Eccles. For 11th grade, we have Armand Phillips and Jamaya Muhammad. For 12th grade, we have Khalees Bost and Karam Laws. On October 26, STEM sophomores and juniors took the PSAT while the seniors took SAT. Great job to Armand Phillips and Amber Morgan for their high scores. On December 6, the Kester Upland Counseling Team hosted a college and career fair for all students. All Chester Upland School District 11th and 12th grade students had the opportunity to attend. December is a festive month and senior officers along with Ms. Thompson have organized some special events such as we have a kickback tomorrow for all seniors. Um, we have spirit week going on tomorrow is Grinch vs. Santa theme and that is all. <laughs> I, I am curious as I try to act like I can see that screen and didn't bring my glasses, but holiday kickbacks, what's that all about? Um, it's just something for all the seniors. We're going to be in an auditorium and I, we're going to have like a, a brunch okay. with activities for us to win like prizes and stuff. Nice, nice. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We will now have our presentations. I believe we have, uh, I don't know who's up first, Dr. Green or Dr. Green or Principal Metley. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I will not be here tomorrow. 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 I will not be so, our theme this year is Academic Success Under Construction. We are cutting out all distractions, tightening our study habits, hitting the books, measuring success, and nailing our assessments. Attendance. So, this was a snapshot from last December 13th, so that was oh, almost a week ago. So, we are averaging about 87% attendance daily with our students. But I will say that um, Principal Bentley, we were on a call earlier, and the stomach bug, the flu, and everything is mm -hmm. taken all of us out. So our, our numbers, we want them to be a bit higher. However, we are dealing with a lot of factors that we don't have control over right now. Mm -hmm. Dip bowls. So we have a team of individuals in the district. They are reading specialists or instructional support teacher leaders. They go around the district to the elementary schools to perform the DIBBLE assessment on students in kinder through third grade. So DIBBLE is a dynamic indicator of basic early literacy skills. This is a snapshot of the beginning year benchmark for uh, sector. So you can see kindergarten, first, second, third. We have in kindergarten students that are well below benchmark is about 25%, but at benchmark we are a little over 50%. First grade, well below 50%, but combined for at benchmark and above benchmark, we are ranging close to 40%. And second grade, 33% below benchmark, and we are again above 
benchmark, I'm sorry, at benchmark or above benchmark, we're about 50%, or a little over 50. In third grade, 40% below benchmark, and we're at about 55% at or above benchmark. Yes, that's it. So this is data from the past three years of PFSA data for SEPSA. So this first screen is third grade, and as you can see, the, I would say maybe like a line green is below basic, yellow is basic, green is proficient, and blue is advanced. So in third grade, you can see that from three years ago until last year, we have made strides in increasing students in third grade, and again, this is ELA, making uh, either proficient or advanced. Next, we have mathematics. So if you see the mathematics three years ago, and it also tells you on the side like the number of students tested each year, so that also helps with our um, understanding how many students that this is um, affecting. So we were at 78.8%, well below basic, I'm sorry, below basic about three years ago. So moving to this year, although we are not where we want to be, we have uh, closed that gap. So Fourth grade, fourth grade students take ELA, math, and science. So this first slide is our ELA performance. And you can see that three years ago, we had more students that were advanced than we do now. So again, we are working, 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 but we want to be in a proficient and advanced from where we were a few years ago. This is our mathematics information. And as you can see, we have made huge difference in math for fourth grade. Coming from three years ago, we were 81.8% below basic. This past year, we were 38.2%. We had 44% students that were basic and proficient in advanced, 17.6%. Mm -hmm. Science, uh, when, when the teacher that taught science last year, she does teach it again this year, fourth grade, she had to ask me, is this, am I saying this correct? So she had over 60% of students proficient in advance in science. Mm -hmm. So she was extremely proud of herself and the work that she did with her students all year long because anybody that works with children knows that the children that show up to school is what you have to teach, meaning whether they didn't get enough sleep the night before, whether, you know, they're mm -hmm. hungry, they're tired. We have to work with the students that come in. And just seeing this gives encouragement to everybody that we can do it and we are trying to do it. Fifth grade, so fifth grade, this is ELA three years ago. Uh, we had a smaller percentage of students that were below basic that did increase over time. However, we are still working towards students being proficient in advance. And math, so in math, uh, we did Growth support is below basic. Math, as we all know, the higher that we get in grades, the tougher it gets. Mm -hmm. And the more you have to explain, you cannot just put an answer down. You have to actually explain your thinking. So in math, this is another area that we are working intently on, growing our students to proficient in advance. All right, these are three pillars that I live by, excess, exposure, and opportunities. I believe that if you give students access, exposure, and opportunities, they will grow. It cannot all just be in the classroom because we know that it's all experiences together that help even adults grow. It's not just one way, but we have to give students multiple ways to grow. So the, what are we doing to make a difference is the question. These are some things that we are doing. We have monthly PBIS assemblies, which help students want to come to school because they don't want to miss these assemblies. We have the MTSS um, in our building. We actively meet once a month where we have students that may be on our radar that are falling behind, attendance, things may be going on that we can help them be better prepared in school and do well while in school. We are focusing more on small group learning because a lot of times it's not the teacher teaching to everyone the same thing, but we have to break down what do these students need help in. 
We have a reading assist program where at Stetson we have two full-time individuals that they meet with 16 students every single day. These are students that are struggling in reading, word recognition, mm -hmm. but with the help of these two ladies that literally come every single day, we have seen so much fruit. Um, PD, continuous learning with field trips, and also publicly acknowledging students' achievement. Sometimes just to hear your name called because you came to school every day this week, that makes a difference. It, it, it does. Our counseling connections, I will always say I have the best counselor in the district, Ms. Pryor. This is a newsletter. Every single month we have newsletters that go home to all families, and it's in digital. But we focus on a specific theme, and our teacher goes into class and teaches every single class. So December is kindness month. So our social worker is always accessible to any student. She has students on her caseload, but it does not matter. You do not have to be on her caseload to go to see her. If there's anything that she can help with the family, she's there to do it. Keeping us busy. So after school, it's always busy. It's a busy time. It feels like we go from 7.30 to about 6 o'clock every single day because we always have students throughout the building, and these are some of the activities that the students are able to participate in. These are some things that during the day we have third grade community violin, we have the kindergarten sing program, we have the cues in school, um, Stetson was also recognized as being an eco school for our sustainability efforts, so we were excited to hear about that. Garrett Williamson. Garrett Williamson, this is a, they basically do farm education, and they are partnering with us to bring actual farm experiences to Stetzer, and they have also went out to get grants so that they can pay for us to go to their facility to learn about these different things. We also have greater partners. Greater partners, they come and they teach classes three times a year. For every single class, they, we also have work support, and we have a monthly fresh fruit and vegetable distribution at the school. The digital calendar, it only um, goes, the digital calendar, the calendar, the newsletter? Yes. That only goes out digital? Yes. So how do you reach the parents and families that are not digital? So when students are registered, we get emails. Mm -hmm. Also, when um, any student that's registered last year, before we, well, it always went out digital. However, we pushed to having everything digital, so we have email addresses from all of our families in the building. Thank you, Dr. Thank Green. You. Great Thank presentation, you. good progress. Mm -hmm. Principal Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Principal Darnell Medley, I am the proud principal of Main Street Elementary School. Um, again, time is of the essence. I do not want to get in trouble. So I'm going to speak fast. Um, this is our mission. Our mission of Main Street Elementary School is to cultivate the intellect, to cultivate the intellect, foster the character, and ignite imagination for our students so that they can become leaders who choose their own futures in college and beyond. Our Main Street motto and our students recite this every day. We are here to learn, therefore we will respect our school, ourselves, and others, cooperate with all school staff, take responsibility for ourselves, and put forth our best effort. Next, you'll see our student activities. We have our PBI, we had our PBIS house reveal party, and this is our positive behavior intervention supports. Um, we set up houses sort of like Harry Potter. So we have a red house, green house, yellow house, and a blue house. 
and at the beginning of the year, new students find out their houses. Once you get your color, that's your house throughout your um, career in Main Street. And each house is made up of pre-K, K, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and autistic support. So each house is inclusive of a sampling of each and every one of our students. We have our annual Main Street Goes Pink for the Cure, where we raise money for breast cancer awareness, and we give money to a deserving breast cancer survivor, and then we culminate with a walk around. We usually do a song or something at the end. Our students really look forward to that. We have a harvest parade where our students get to dress up. They look forward to that as well. We have partnered with Upland Police Department. They send a police officer to our school every Wednesday to read to our students. And they read in pre-K on up. And then here you see they put the K-9 unit out to, um, so that one of our students, so that one of our classes can see the K-9 unit. See, they're keeping their distance. But we do this so that our students cannot look at the police as someone to fear, but someone to be support, a proactive measure in our community. PBIS painting party. Students earn PBIS tiger dollars, and if they earn enough tiger dollars, they can do something like this painting party. So this costs, I think, $20. So the student could do like a, a paint, painting party, and they really enjoyed that. Our science fair um, that was mentioned in the, in the superintendent support report, our students in grades three through five, each student is required to complete a science fair project. Students in grades kindergarten, first and second, they did group projects. But this year, our kindergarten teachers required their students to do a project, so they all did bird feeders. Oh, okay. Then we have our Century 21 after school program. Um, this was their initial program, their lights on, and tomorrow they will have a winter celebration. School wide data. Now, as we go through this, um, we use iReady because that's what we use to measure our students and they continue to work on that throughout the year. Um, as I go through this, I want you to look at, um, say this is kindergarten. Now kindergarten comes in a blank slate. So you're going to have more of the tier two and that's sort of the tier one as they come in. But I'll be excited to show you our data for them at the end of the year. Same thing for math. This is their beginning day. Now, as we go through first grade, I want you to look at the red, yellow, and green from 2022 to 2023 when they came in, and then look at the change from 2023 to 2024. As you can see, this year our average students um, are decreasing and our tier two and tier one students are increasing with our initial data coming in in the fall. And that trend goes through in math as well. Second grade was a little bit iffy, but we're pouring a lot of resources into our second grade. We have our reading assist partners. We have our um, reading specialists, we have our math interventionalists, and we also have our instructional teacher leader working with our second grade teachers to help boost these um, scores. The third grade, you can see where the trend continues, where the um, red and yellow, the red decreases and the yellow and green increases from the year before as our students were coming in. So that's third grade reading. Same thing with third grade math, whereas last year we didn't have anyone starting to tier one. We had students in tier one. Same thing with fourth grade reading, fourth grade math. And fourth, I'm sorry, fourth grade math. Then fifth grade, um, look at this. We had last year coming in, we had 88% of students um, in tier three. This year it went down to 71. Um, our tier two rose to 17 percent and our tier one rose to 12 percent reading and math at the beginning of the last year they came in at 90 percent but this year it went down to 68 percent tier two went from seven percent to 20 percent and tier one from two percent to 12 percent 
So we're excited for our mid-year data that's going to come in in January. Um, we've been working really hard with our students, and again, we're excited to see that growth. We're looking forward and expecting it. Our PSSA data from last year, um, as you can see, we have some work to do. Um, we have students uh, overall advanced. We only had 2% proficient. We had 16% in um, ELA, 46% basic, and 36 below basic. Um, last year in our PSSA overall scores. <clears throat> math, we are really working hard in math because our below basics is 62%, basic is 29%, fifth is 8%, and we only had 1% advance. And I'll tell you as we go forward what I'm doing to help boost those scores. Science, we were, we were pleased uh, with science. We only had 26% below basic, 33% basic 35 proficient and 2% advance in our science scores. One of the things we pride because we put a lot of effort into our PBIS um, activities is our climate and safety. So this is our PBIS matrix. Um, our students see the roar. They know that R stands for respect. O is one task. A is act safely and R is responsi responsible. And this is the behavioral matrix that they follow. And they're, this is posted in every classroom so students know um, what is expected of them in all areas of the building. We have a tiger of the month. Each month, our students are displayed and we have our parents come in um, for a small celebration highlighting our tiger of the month students. And our Tiger of the Month students are nominated from classroom teachers, specialist teachers, lunch aides, um, administration, everybody can nominate. This is our house hub where our students always know what's going on. They know what upcoming events are coming up. They look forward to spending their money at the school store, which is only for certain events. And it lets us know our monthly focus. Um, this month is respect, and it has the examples and characteristics. Another thing we do to boost PPIS, we have the Roaring Tigers Board. Because this month is respect, those little um, pieces of paper you see, teachers catch people um, doing something respectful, they give the paper to me, I shout them out, and then it's displayed on the board. Our PBIS, we, we are very proud of the results. If you look at the, our school suspensions, um, the gray is 2023-2024, which is this school year, the orange is last school year, and blue is 2021-2022. Um, if you look in September of last year, the number of suspensions we had, this year we had none. And then if you look in October, the number of suspensions we had in October and how it drastically decreased. Um, and then we're in November, same thing, it's decreasing from last year, and right now, in December, we just, we're just getting into December, and we don't have any. So we're looking for that to go um, decrease across the board, and I really think it's because we've made a positive effort to keep our PBIS activities up so that our students um, can look forward to what well-behaved students get. <laughs> We are main street strong. Play it. <laughs> Some of the things that we are doing to boost these scores, especially in reading, we have a first in math. Um, program that our students is digital. They go on at the end of each week. I shout out the students who made the most progress. Same thing with iReady. I shout out students who passed the most um, successful iReady lessons in each grade. I also shout out students. Each day I shout out classrooms that have perfect attendance. And like Dr. Green said, our students like to hear their names called out. They like to be praised. They like to be recognized for the good things that they are doing. So thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Again, keep up the great work at Main Street.
At this time, we will have the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting on November 21st, 2023. The minutes for November 21st, 2023 are hereby approved. Madam Secretary, any public comment on action item only? Thank you. So for action items only, we have Ms. Micah Mitchell. Please uh, step to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Oh no, this is public comment. This agenda items, yes, agenda items. No, agenda items. Did you did you want something on the agenda? Or is it a general public comment? Okay. Ms. Denise Mosley? Thank you, Denise Mosey. I just have a question on C8. If that is the year is correct, it says to provide for 2021-2022 federally mandated Title I and Title II for DCIU. Is that year correct? If it's not, if it can be corrected, and if it is corrected, can the language be changed to reflect that this is retroactive? Yes, my understanding is that it is for this particular school year that's on here. Um, let's see, so the, current the current school year. So it's not 21 22. Oh, wow. So Can that be corrected, please? Oh, so yes, let's are... reflect that for Thank the, you. For the uh, minutes and for the public that C8 should read approval for the Delaware County Intermediate Unit to provide. 2023 2024 federal mandate title one and title two services for non public school students and staff. And please make sure it's corrected in the recommended action section as well. So our minutes and agendas are correct. And I just had a general question for Dr. Green and um, Principal Medley. Are the students that you're collecting data for, are they the same cohort of students each year? Are they followed from year to year? The same student? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mosley. Ms. A. Jean Arnold, 2601 McCary Street. Thank you for remembering my address, sir. You know, I tend to forget that sometimes. <laughs> uh, I have a question also for. C8, and my question is, do we have established goals that the Delaware County IU is going to be um, looking towards as they work with our students in Title I and Title II funding? It's a great idea for them to come along and provide help, but I was wondering whether or not we had some actual goals that they were looking to achieve so that we could know whether they're successful or not. Then for item B2, uh, there is not an attachment for Dr. Mumin's salary, et cetera. It says that there should be an attachment, but I didn't see one there. So maybe you could add that at some point. And then in C7, I am trouble, troubled with um, this contract because when I looked at the Okay. Oh, right. oh, you... When I looked at the details of the contract and the duties, 
it looks very much like what the director of the business department should be doing, and it somewhat seems redundant to me. So I'm really concerned about how we bring a contractor back to do $50,000 a year for what I think the persons in the department should be doing anyway. So I had some real concerns about that. Okay. Um, I hope the right description went up, Ms. Arnold, because the contract should be for, as a compliance monitor, to review, you know, things around uh, monthly and quarterly reports and AFR type stuff. It's not extensive. It shouldn't be. I'm a, I'm, of course, I can't click this right here to lift it up, but I'll look I have, into that. There, there are 15 items. I have to be. Shouldn't be. Should be only be four. But. Well, I think I have this right. It looks like 15 items, and it looks like the job description of the person who's the current manager, I think. That is exactly what it is. So you're right. So the, okay. the wrong attachment is there. We will get that updated. I apologize. So now I'm really wondering what the person will be doing because it wasn't published as the attachment like we thought we were doing. Well, I think I just told you what the person was going to be doing around compliance monitoring, reviewing the quarterly report, the monthly reports and quarterly reports that review. Uh, and they're, again, also doing like the pre-audit work. But some of those things that you described to me sound like some of those 14 items that are there. So They're that's not, my concern. Okay. okay yeah. I hear you. I hope I haven't made enemies of anyone. Uh, I'm very concerned about how we spend our money and $50,000 to bring back a contractor for that seemed to me. Uh, I would have wished that we could have spent that $50,000 different. But And it is a not to exceed. So just think it's just... It's not saying that we will spend fifty thousand dollars. That's the amount that we can go up to. I saw that, sir. Sure. Hundred dollars yes, an hour. Yeah. For ten I, hours of what a week? I think it is. And again, it may not be ten hours a week either, Ms. Hunter. We're not holding. Just wanted to put the my person concerns. that's coming back. I will say is a, a good steward of Chester Upland's money, and I don't think that they would do anything. Oh, I, I think the world of the person coming back. Mm -hmm. Not a personal issue here again. No, no, no. It, I get yeah. It. So we'll clean it up, and I do apologize that, uh, you know, that happened. Can, can I, I get my you can have, back? Yeah, you can have this yeah, back. Thank yes. you. And I'll answer the Title One, Title Two question for you, Ms. Arnold. So all LEAs are required to submit consolidated applications for federal dollars. It includes Title One, Title Two, Title Three, and Title Four. And a part of that is goal setting that is submitted and approved by the Division of Federal Programs. So to your point, yes. There are goals. So at, some so at some point, we will publish what those goals are, and we will be able to measure how successful the IU has been in working towards those for our students' achievement, et cetera. We will make sure those goals good. Are Wonderful. So Thank you. Yeah, they they're, already, yeah, they're already public as well. But, but OK, we'll. Thank you. Thank you. I only had three items for agenda items. The rest are non-agenda items. Thank oh, you. Thank you. All right, at this time, we will take action on approving education agenda items A1 through A11. Education agenda items A1 through 11 are hereby approved. Personnel agenda items B1 through B2. Personnel agenda items B1 through B2 are hereby approved. Business agenda items C1 through C8. Business agenda items C1 through C8 are hereby approved. ESSER agenda item D1. ESSER Agenda Item D1 is hereby approved. At this time, we will have public comment. No public comment? Okay. No one signed up for public comment? Not Well, Ms. Arnold, we know you have it. Let's, we can, we'll... She only has one sheet that I have on. That's fine. And, and state your name and address on the record. You have three minutes, and we will respond within three business days. Gene Arnold, 2601 McCary Street. We still need, I think, a crossing guard at 10th and Highland, particularly around the hours of around 2.30, something like that. Uh, I was there passing by this afternoon, and there was a bus that discharged some students. There was no crossing guard. I did send a note to uh, President Neal about that when I observed it. Another question, when will the marquees be up that we uh, are supposed to be, um, that we have funds to fix? I remember uh, 
Mr. Nichols, you shared that with me a little while ago. If we could have an update about those marquees, that would be great. The boats in Toby that we made, built last year, were critically important, very, very helpful activity. I am asking, sir, that you find a way to make sure that we do that activity again. I know that, that construction is happening in the building, but it would be unconscionable if that construction prohibits us for finding a space for those children to build their boats again. So please, sir, make sure that we are able to do that. Um, I still want to make an argument that we need more staffing in our security areas from in our, in our different buildings and possibly in climate. I think they're understaffed, they're very much needed, and uh, while we find funds to do other things, I would love it if we could find some funds to increase the uh, staffing for our security. They are the first persons that our children see. They're very critically important for the welfare and climate of our buildings, and I just think that we should support them uh, better with funding and with salaries. And uh, could we look at our website and update our organizational chart? It currently has Dr. Craig Parkinson as the superintendent. You know I'm a stickler for that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ms. Arnold. Okay. Oh, I thought uh, council, councilwoman. Uh, no. Board Member Harris was going to say something, no? What were you saying? We do have a crossing guard at 10th and Howard. We have a female there. And sometimes the buses may come early. They don't come on staff until 2.30 to 4.30. So maybe this bus today that you that you seen was early no. before the crossing guard got there. No. All I can tell you is that the crossing guard came after 2.30 and there was no adult there assisting those children getting off of the bus. Sometimes we run a little late, but I'm quite sure I have not been in my office. But the guards are usually calling and let me know they're going to be late. Um, I'm just concerned about the safety of our children when they discharge from the buses, and I'm sure you are too. So that, that was the only reason I bothered to report it. All right. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Arnold. And we Thank will you. make sure... Crossing guard issues do live with the city of Chester, yeah, but we yeah. do communicate with them about those issues. So I will personally make sure that I notify everyone at the city of Chester, including the police commissioner. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mr. Thank Arnold. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. Thank you, thank thank you. you also for raising the question about P7. The yes. person that's here that would normally question, she didn't, but that's probably because of her door. Thank you. Any other public comment? So, um, Sylvia Richville, uh, 107 East 23rd Street. Um, not really a comment. I just want to say thank you. I made a uh, concern about the lighting out front of the high school, and it's very well lit up now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like we have no more public comment. I would like to say have a very, very jolly, well, happy holiday. I think yeah, you have to say it that way. Uh, and we will see you all in January. We hope that everyone is safe, secure, and warm. All right. The meeting is adjourned.